So I'm happy to present Jacqueline Calder, and she is an innovation and innovation specialist with the Simcoe County District School Board, but beyond that, she is really a technology guru, somebody that, lot, that has a ton of information, has incredible ideas, and lots of passion for using technology in the classroom and also supporting teachers in helping them um, integrate technology into their programs in a meaningful way. And it's always a pleasure to work with Jacqueline and always lots of fun. Her sessions are, are interactive and fun and we're really thrilled to have her here today. We have people from all over the province that are going to be uh, learning from Jacqueline and we're thrilled to have her with us. So Jack, um, it's, up to, it, it's all up to you now. <laughs> Thanks, Sally. <laughs> Thanks, Sally. And welcome, um, Chris. And I think uh, the topic tonight is one of those ones that um, that's kind of near and dear to me, only because I've been, I am perceived, especially probably more than I actually am, but as one of those people that's kind of, you know, your resident geek, I've been in various technology roles and kind of do a lot of weird stuff with technology, but along with all of that technology, there's kind of this whole responsibility piece. And I'm not usually the one that's known for the the slowdown and the and the kind of thinking about what we're doing, and I'm usually the go go go. But the idea that we as teachers were kind of thrown into this internet type <laughs> teaching and using all these web tools and web resources at the same time with all of our students, I just I'm, I feel really strongly uh, about around the idea of modeling appropriate use with our students. So my plan for tonight, and I'm going to kind of see if you guys are on board with this plan for tonight, is to spend about 15 minutes at the beginning looking at the current copyright laws. A lot of us might know them. They've changed within the last little while, um, relaxed, and made it actually a little bit easier in terms of the laws for us. Um, and so let's just spend some time pointing out where some of the resources are on copyright if we ever have questions or things, talking about any of the weird things that are there. Um, and then not spend too much time there, but just make sure that we're kind of all on the same page around the copyright stuff. And then start looking at the Creative Commons, how we license our own material for Creative Commons if we want, how we find um, material that other people have licensed with Creative Commons, and then some practice some sourcing it, and a neat little tool online that makes it easier, especially for younger students, to source materials and to find images, I'm um, sorry, um, that have been licensed with Creative Commons and to source them automatically. Does that sound like an okay plan for folks? And we can either throw yes in the chat or um, the green check mark. The other thing would be in the chat, anything specifically you'd love or want to get out of tonight that maybe I haven't mentioned there or you want to make sure I know about? Um, anything you were hoping that I haven't kind of mentioned? Okay, I don't see anyone typing anything in the chat. Of course, anything comes up that we want to kind of go off topic for or send me with homework to go looking, then uh, that is absolutely great. So um, I do want, I'm just curious to start. Can you, this is always a bit contentious, do I choose elementary or secondary to be the green check mark and which one becomes the red X? Um, because I'm secondary, I'll beat on the secondary folks for tonight. Um, and if you are in elementary, could you hit the green check mark? And if you're a secondary panel, can you hit the red X? What a great balance. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Just curious. Um, so basically, we're hitting and looking for a whole wide range tonight. So if I'm talking about something that isn't um, making sense to you or you're struggling to put it into the context of your reality, of what you're working with every day, then um, ask and let's, uh, we'll just try and make sure that no one is, uh, is not getting what they need. That's basically the moral of the story. Ask. Ask, 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 and we'll try and make sure. I certainly wouldn't want to waste anyone's time because you're here on your own time. Okay, the first resource I'd like to look at is the Council, okay, let me get this right, the Council of Ministers of Education of Canada, um, so all the ministers of education across Canada, have created a resource about um, copyright. And I'm going to try to put it right on the screen in front of us here. So I'm going to try and do a web tour. 
Sometimes this technology works great for um, a session in the evening. Sometimes it doesn't. Let's try it and see what happens. So basically what's going to happen is I'm posting a link. Oh, oh, it's not a good start. It won't even let me post a link into it. Okay, never mind. Um, yes, yeah, so I posted the link in the uh, in the chat as well. So Jacqueline, if you, you want people to go there. Can you try, Bali? I've got, I'm trying to do a web tour. Yep. And with the link that I just posted, a little bit more detailed than the generic council minister. Okay, I'll, I'll try putting it in. Thanks. It won't let me post into the web tour link right now. Oh, and my link says it's a bad request? Oh, well, that could be partly why I'm struggling in here. Let me try that again, sorry. Oh. Yep. I'm having some texting issues with the program tonight. I think something's wrong with my Java. Um, no, you know what? It's happening to me as well, the bad request. Oh, okay. Can you just try the CM? cmec.ca up on that web tour then? Sorry. Okay, yeah, just hold on a sec. Okay. Thank you, sorry. No worries. For some reason, when I put, when I paste the link in the chat, it cuts my link off halfway. It won't wrap, word wrap it. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to click on follow me here. And then I'm going to take us through this site and see if I can't get um, us right into the page that I'm looking for. Okay, so I'm going to try that green check mark again. Does everybody see on the web tour in front of us the CMEC site that says copyright in the blue bar? Can I get a green check mark if you do see that on the screen? Oh, that's a good start. Okay. Anyone who doesn't, if you went to the CMEC site on your own, if you go to Program and Initiatives and then Copyright, you'd be on the same page as we are. So basically it just says um, CMEC, and I'll give everyone a copy of the slide deck from tonight. We'll send that out with the resources. And um, all these links are in it. So if you can see the CMEC site either on the screen in Blackboard where we are right now in our session, or if you're seeing it on your own um, browser window, either one is good. But the, so the, Can the Canadian Ministers of Education Council, or of Canada, sorry, the Council of Ministers of Education of Canada, um, have created all of these resources about copyright when all of the laws changed. And so this page here has all sorts of um, materials, and then it has that link on there that says copyright information for teachers. So the, the little video I'm about to show, and then a little kind of FAQ for teachers that we're going to look at, both came from this resource. And it's, it's great. Even um, I've even sent kids here in secondary is my background. Um, when they were asking, can we do, can we use this, or what can we do with this? And I didn't know the answer off the top of my head. It was one of those weird um, circumstances. And I sent them here, and they found the material on their own. So this resource can be quite helpful, um, and we'll make sure that it comes to you in the um, in the resources and in the slide deck. So I'm just going to grab the next link and stand the web tour and see if this works. Um, Let's see. Okay. There's a little video here, Maui. I'm just posting a link in the chat. Would you be able to put that link into the web? Or let me just try and see if I can do it. No, yep, I, I can. Know. Thanks. Yeah, for me, the web tour links aren't working. Yeah, no, I, and I have all the links as well, so. Oh, awesome. Let me just get rid of this one. There you go. Thank you. So this is a um, this is a four-minute video, 
and it's kind of an overview on what the um, the new fair use uses are for copyright protected works for teachers. So I'm going to suggest that we spend a minute or four minutes each watching this video. You can either watch it in the, from the link in the chat by clicking on it and going and watching it in a separate window, or you can watch it right here in the screen. And I'm going to mute my microphone for I'm going to all, for exactly four minutes and 23 seconds so that I'm not talking over top of you while you try to watch the video. And then we'll come back here and we'll have a quick chat. Um, the other, the only other thing I'd like to really spend some time with on the copyright is the FAQ for teachers because there's some really um, interesting circumstances in there where they talk about media for parent nights. And I'm sorry if you hear crazy noises coming from my house. My dog is snoring louder than I've ever heard beside me right now. I apologize. Um, it's actually a guest dog. But um, So let me mute my microphone for four minutes and we will watch the video and then we'll come back and um, have a quick chat for it about it. So again, the video is either right in front of you or in the link in the chat. And if you finish um, just indicate that you finished with the green check mark and we'll know to come back as well. Okay, I'll just give a couple more seconds and then I'll start back. Okay, it looks like most of us are back. I hope I'm not talking talking over top of anyone's um over top of anyone's uh, video still in the background there. I'm gonna try my web tour again here and see if it if it works or not. Okay, this is the first time I've tried doing a web tour to a PDF. I'm not sure what's going on on people's screen right now. Do you see a Francine? I don't know. I will look into that. That is a great question. I'll look into it. Okay, I'm going to, um, it looks like my texting is working again. Nope, that didn't work. Mally, could you try pasting the link to this um, PDF if you have it there? Um, because my link's cut off in the chat for some reason. They don't wrap around. Um, can I, let's try doing a green check mark if you see copyright matters and the orange PDF in front of us on the screen. Oh, so it's just me that sees it. Okay, sorry. Okay, so then in that case, Okay, in that case, I am going to go back to the to the slide deck. I'm just going to wait and see what people are typing in the chat before I jump ahead. I have a sense that there's a bit of a delay coming from me right now. Okay. Oh. Oh, really, Cheryl? So at the end of the Vimeo, and I've already closed it on my screen. <laughs> on the end of uh, so Cheryl's it's Francine, Cheryl saying that at the end of that Vimeo. That there was a French, the French version of it coming up in the net, right next in the Vimeo after, um, and I'll take a look on the uh, CMEC website after to look for if there's a whole set of French resources. Um, and in terms of the web tour for this PDF, it's clearly not working. I'm going to go back to the um, PowerPoint presentation and I'm going to go to. Okay, so. This is, I'm just going to type the link in here into the chat, and it's copyright matters. Try that link that I put into the chat, and let me know if you're getting the PDF open up um, in a separate window. If you could do that, if you could try and open up that PDF in a separate window, and then give me a green check if you can 
if you can look at that on a separate screen, if that works for you. You kind of got it? Good. Cheryl's got it? Great. You kind of downloaded it. Awesome. The cat's got it. Sharon's got it. Great, great. Chris has got it. Okay. So, here is my plan, or my thought. Let's take a look. There are... Do, 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 do. How many FAQs are there? There are one through until... Oh, that is like lots of FAQ. But we don't like one, two, or three. Okay. Okay. Here's my plan. Starting with question with FAQ number four. Would you guys, I'm going to clear this, would you guys be okay if we each went and read one FAQ each and came back and just in turn either typed in the chat just what it was about, um, if you don't have the microphone, or grabbed the microphone and just kind of said what that quick, that one little FAQ um, was about. If anyone's not comfortable when we get to them, then it's absolutely fine. I'm just going to start at the list, and Brooke would be FAQ question four, Cheryl would be five, Chris would be six, Francine would be seven, Laura would be seven, eight, <laughs> uh, Nikat would be nine, and Robin would be ten, Sharon would be eleven, Teresa is away, Johanna would be twelve. And then if you want to just take a look at that FAQ, and then we'll all come, so maybe three minutes, uh, four minutes, I think most of them are short, I hope I didn't give anyone that's a crazy long one. Um, just take a quick look at what your FAQ was about, was about and then we'll come back and just kind of mention what it was about. And then um, I have a couple slides on some things that struck me as um, things I hadn't thought about before, I guess, or surprising to me, and we'll just share kind of what we think about that. So let I will pause my, my microphone for about three minutes, and we'll go and just take a quick look at some of the FAQs. And okay, and I'll just put the timer on. So Jacqueline, do you want to explain oh. that again? Francine wants to know. Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. So we're going to go um, to the FAQ that are at, I'm going to type the link into the chat again here. One sec. Okay, that link that I've pasted there. We're going to go and look at the PDF. Um, I'm going to go through the numbers again. Okay. So Brooke is one. Cheryl is two. Chris is three. Francine, oh no, sorry, we started with number four. I'm sorry. Scratch those numbers. Brooke is four, Cheryl is five, Chris is six, Francine is seven, Laura is eight, Nikat is nine, Robin is ten, Sharon is eleven, and Teresa is twelve now, and Johanna will be thirteen. So just look at the FAQ number that's that question number, and then we'll come on back. And you can, I mean, look at any other part of it as well, too. So awesome, so we've got the timer set. And I will mute my microphone for that time. Okay, if folks want to um, head on back into this room, even if you didn't really get through, depending on your question. If whoever had 12, oh, and Johanna, you had 13. I'm sorry to those. So, Teresa, did you end up with 12? Oh, boy, I am so sorry. I didn't um, realize we were going to go that high up. You got a crazy, ridiculous um, one. So don't don't worry about that, please. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go through and just take a look at the ones that are in the chat right now. So Cheryl's had number five. So teachers can copy, communicate, and or translate a various work for a test or an exam, as long as the work's not already commercially available in a test exam format. That's fun. That one always kind of struck me as odd because um, it takes a lot of research to find out if some material is already available for to purchase in that format. But to, I suppose in our in our areas we would we would know, and you don't have to type it in. If you'd rather grab the microphone, please just throw your hand up, and uh, I will pass off the mic to you. 
Um, so you have to have 13, that anyone can use copyrighted works to create new works. However, it has to be for non-commercial use and then obtained legally and mention the source mm, and not neg negatively affect them. Interesting. That was an interesting one, in the, in the cat. The can teachers play a sound recording or turn on a radio? Um, I don't know if you have a microphone. Did you get a chance to um, go through on that one at all? I have some interest. That was one of the ones I made note of. Did you have anything that you um, wanted to that you noticed about that that you wanted to speak to with the microphone, or or not? Or did you get it all down there? Okay, um, I found that one, at first it sent me, when I first heard, read the one that Nakat's talking about, the one where it starts to ask questions about whether or not we can play the radio in the background. So the audio recording component is very interesting for copyright. We can use it to assess. So if I want to assess music, lyrics, songs, and audio, I can, or a news report I can for educational purposes, I can use any of those things in my class as long as we're looking and assessing or using the content educationally. But it doesn't copy, it doesn't cover just playing the radio or not so much the radio as it is the uh, playing a CD in my classroom. Because that's for just in the background while every kid, while kids are doing their work. It actually doesn't cover that. What does cover that are the separate licenses that school boards purchase there's SOCAN and re, um, ReSound. And I had to go and make sure that I, you know, go through and start doing some research and looking around. And my board, I know, purchases both of those now. Um, the ReSound is a bit of a new one. But um, that struck me as quite interesting, the idea of playing like a CD or, you know, iTunes purchase music in the background actually isn't covered by the, the fair dealings. Yes, Cheryl. So if I subscribe to something like iTunes Music or Spotify and I want to choose a song from one of my streaming subscriptions and share it with the students in the class, maybe I'm showcasing a connection to something, am I legally allowed to do that? Yes, if you're looking at it educationally and for just playing in the background as music, like entertainment, while you're working or something, you have to have the SOCAN and the, or the ReSound um, uh, licenses or contracts that the boards purchase. But yes, if you're looking at it for an educational purpose, yes. And is then the same thing if, let's say, I'm doing something with a group of kids and I want them to come up with a song playlist that best reflects something, they're allowed to share it using that, those streaming services as well then? Yes. Thank you. No problem. It's very finicky and interesting. Like I, some of that stuff really kind of took me as surprise. Um, uh, so let's take a look at what some of the other ones are here. Teachers and students can copy and communicate the text of government material. Awesome. Um, we can copy for a visually impaired student if it's not already available in the format to purchase. Um, libraries do have some more lean, um, leniency, yep, to make extra copies for the, I like that, the interlibrary loans and then for the backups. Um, yeah, Teresa, the, the deals with the playing of music and the performance of music, that's um, some of the stuff I was just talking about there, played into that one as well. Um, and can Brooks talking about the um, question number four, can a teacher copy for instruction? Yes. Um, as long as it's not already uh, commercially available to purchase. And the other thing that I noticed in there was that it had to be password protected, which was um, could be quite interesting, depending on how, like if you're posting online, sorry, in a classroom, it's not password protected, but um, if you're posting online. Um, can we copy musical scores? Not for the whole thing but the fair dealings allows for a single score from a work, right, up to that 10%. Oh, Laura, excellent point. And they can also make a copy to, pr to preserve stuff. Great. Yes, Cheryl. So just going back to that teacher being able to copy for instruction, 
So if the teacher's copying for instruction so that they can project it onto a whiteboard or, or whatnot, does that mean they can copy like an entire resource and then let's say they have a let's say it's a, a professional resource and it, they only have a, a hard copy. Can they make it into a full PDF, the entire thing, so that then they can use it for like whiteboards and things like that? Just the ten percent. So it so it always goes back to that ten percent. Yeah, it's always that fair usage or that fair, what do I call it, fair dealing, sorry. Um, and I actually, let me just move on my slide because I copied that right there um, on the slides. This is what the fair dealing, a short excerpt means, up to 10% of a copyright protected work, like a literary work or the musical score, um, one chapter from a book, a single article from a periodical, and the entire artistic work counts. Um, so like a piece of art or a drawing or a map within a, a resource, um, an entire newspaper article or a page, a single poem or a musical score, and then an entire entry from an encyclopedia or an annotated bibliography. Um, so that's what is considered that short excerpt from things. I just saw a couple of things pop up in chat to make sure. Okay. Um, so let me just go back on my slides here to where I well here's here are some of the um the things that struck me when I was looking through this. Um and I'd love to hear some more input on things that kind of struck person people. Um but the idea that everything we use has to be sourced. So I'm not sure how often you've seen, but in my experiences, very often have I seen handouts for students created with images on them that aren't sourced. Um, that are just put onto a handout and sent out with no idea where that image actually came from. Um, or material kind of copied from different places. But there is that whole component still that it has to be sourced. So that's one of those things where, and then it's funny because I look at what we would do with a lot of students if they handed us in. I think we're a little more lenient with images because that's something new-ish. Um, but with text, if students had copied and pasted text and handed it in, I know that most teachers I work with would be quite upset, and yet we're kind of probably the assignment handout had images on it that we didn't source. So I, I, I'm a strong believer of that idea of the modeling um, component. Um, the other thing in my job now that really struck me, because I work a lot with um, like online learning management systems like Google Classroom and uh, D2L or the virtual learning environment, where teachers post a lot of resources on there. Um, and then blogs, like teachers that have blogs and, and websites, is that all of these materials, if we are copying an article like from the STAR web page or something like that, um, we have to source them, but that we also need to keep them on a password protected site so that other people not in education are accessing them, which was interesting. I mean, I think back to how many times in the past I've created websites before a lot of these password protected sites were easily accessible, and I probably posted handouts that had materials from other sources on it um, on my website and it wasn't password protected so I think back to some of the silly things I've probably done in the past but I think that's why they've redone these copyright laws with all the web use. Um, the other thing that really struck me as odd or as interesting was this idea of the SOCAN and the resound um, and that you know most boards do license them so that we can use music um, in our classes and and other things, so that was um, nice to see. And then the idea that it can't be used for profit, and that that actually plays for education um, when we're trying to fundraise too. We can't use these works if we're trying to fundraise. So those were the things that stuck out to me. Is there anything that um, stuck out or was surprising or interesting to anybody else, just kind of looking through that? And I have made sure that you have access to that document once we leave here, because you'll get an email at the end um, after the session that will have a link to all the resources. Um, so I know you didn't have a whole lot of time with that document, but was there anything that kind of struck you as interesting or new learning or anything that was just kind of um, different? Yeah, Cheryl. I'm sorry I'm dominating all of these talk chats. But, uh, I just want no, it's better than hearing my voice. So I just want to clarify. So if I'm creating or one of the teachers on staff is creating some sort of handout, and we go to Google Images and we find um, an image or two that's copyright, prote that's copyright protected, 
we can still use that on our worksheet or document as long as we source where we're cutting it from. You got it. Yeah. And yes. how many images could we put on a document? Can we put 30 images and source them all if we want? Yeah, technically, because it's not about how many, how much copyright protected material you have on your document. It's how much you're taking from the source. So as long as you're just taking a short excerpt from every source, your document's okay. But if I just sense? go, yeah. But if I just go to Google and then I go on images and then I'm looking for, let's say I'm looking for alligators and I type in alligators and all of these images come up and I click any one of them or five of them, that's considered okay? Because or do I have to go to the exact site it's coming from and make sure it's only... No, you, the, only the, the new site. Canadian rules, so the new Canadian rules are that we can actually use anything. So as teachers and educators, in the real world we couldn't, but in our little education wonderful bubble we can. Um, and so part of what I feel is our responsibility is to make sure that students know that. And this is why we're about to transition into the, into the Creative Commons conversation, because I would have this conversation, especially as students get older, um, but have the conversation about the difference between somebody who has copyrighted their material and somebody who has said that are willing to share it. Because we as educators actually treat both those images the same. Right. We treat the copyrighted image the same, we source it. And then the person that shared the image and said that others can use it, we source it and use it too. So I would have that, these conversations with students and help them start to see the difference. Because once they leave the education bubble, if they were creating a resource for work, for a business, they couldn't use the copyright stuff. They could only use the material that people had said they'd share. Okay, and just one last thing, and then I'll be quiet. Um, no, no, please you, don't be quiet. <laughs> somewhere throughout the um, presentation, might you be showing us what appropriate sourcing looks like for kids? Yes, I'm hoping that we're going to practice it all together on a Google set of slides. And I'm going to do a demonstration of me going into Google Images, finding an information how to find who the author is, and the, to who to source it to, and look at a couple of different things. Great, and then are you going to come to my school and show it to everybody? <laughs> Thank no, you. you're going to have the link to the recording for this, and then you can send them to this. Thank you so much. They can watch the recording. Awesome. Okay, so I was going to do a little Padlet where we all kind of through, posted some, um, I'll just show you the slide. I was going to do this where we all just kind of posted or listed some things that we found interesting. I think that we're a small enough group here that we all have a voice um, in the chat if we want to, and I just realized that I am, I totally just, my chat wasn't scrolling and I have missed all of these points. I'm sorry. Um, oh, thanks for those links, Mally, those are awesome. Can students take pictures of pages of books instead of taking notes? As long as it's less than 10% and for education, yes. So, Johanna, the Spotify music account, yeah, and you want to play it. So, as long as your board has the licenses for SoCan and ReSound, and mine does, and I would assume most do, then yes, you can play music in the background. Um, but that's considered um, entertainment, not educational. So, we do have to have these licenses, which is why SoCan and ReSound have these licenses for school boards to purchase. Uh, Teresa, yep, we're limited to 10%. Yes, whichever is longer. We're not, we don't have to take the most restrictive. Um, the Gutenberg test, press text. Yes, so anything in the public domain is fair game. Um, and we're going to talk about that when we get into the Creative Commons. Um, what's the best way to identify the source? We're going to talk about that for images. We're going to show that. It's OK. Yep, provide the website for the for copyrighted material. Yep, you can link to the website below it. Sorry, I'm just trying to, yeah. Yes, Cheryl, I think I've answered that I can create an assignment and use copyright images, yeah. Um, right, Johanna, yes. Yes, so that question about playing music at intermission. If you have the SOCAN and the ReSound licenses, you're good. Those let us have those. those. And yes, depending on the type of bibliography you're using, you would put the source in the bibliography. And we're going to talk about two different ways to source images today. One is for, um, like when we're doing slides and that kind of stuff, how people just kind of sometimes blow 
in small lesson, uh, in small text, source the, the author or the creator. And then we can also talk about having a slide at the end where it's um, credits. Uh, Teresa, no, we don't have to indicate what governance we use it under. We just need to put the author. Perfect. Okay, I hope I got everyone in the chat. If I didn't, please throw up your hand, jump into the chat or something and notify me um, if I missed anything. And there, that FAQ, that PDF that we looked at, I would read it. That sounds a little bit hardcore, I know. Um, but every time I read a new part, my eyes are like, whoa, <laughs> as I started to think about the implications in school. It is quite um, detailed. Okay. Let's start talking about Creative Commons. I love Creative Commons. I mean, I love our new copyright laws, too. And it does make our job a lot easier that we can use material that's copyrighted. Um, but Creative Commons in today's world makes sense to me. It, um, awesome. Thank you. Um, so let's start with a quick, let me just quick description on what Creative Commons is, and then we'll watch the video. Creative Commons is a set of licenses that anybody can license their own work with. And you can, uh, Mally's posted the link in the chat. You can go to the Creative Commons website, and you can choose the kind of license you want. It will provide you with the text and an image. So my personal blog, where I share things that I'm learning and that I'm doing and, you know, Yammeron and Babylon, on my blog, I have a little box down at the, the bottom or off to the, r the right that says, my work is licensed with a Creative Commons. And then I went to the Creative Commons website. I took the text for the type of license that I want and the image for the type of license that I want with all of the features you know, I, that I want. And I'll show you what those features are. Um, and I share and I posted that on my blog so that somebody could take my blog and they could take an excerpt from my post. They could take, um, you know, material that I'm doing and they can use it in their own material. So if somebody was creating maybe a new blog post or a handout about Creative Commons, or okay, maybe I should do something different, about teaching math with technology. I have all sorts of blog posts about teaching math with technology. They might want to grab some ideas from my blog and put it into their PowerPoint that they're going to use when they're working with teachers tomorrow. As long as they source me, and put, you know, give me credit, then they can use that material on their, on their slide deck. And I find that in today's web world, internet world, that is the best way to, to post and to share because I want people to use my material because then they see my name there and it gives me credit. And you start to build rapport or other, more people are exposed to what it is that I'm doing. So I'm writing these blog posts about teaching math and technology because I feel passionately about it. And I want lots of people to see and to hear that and then to either debate me um, and, make, and shift my thinking or to maybe they, they agree with me um, and to maybe shift their thinking. That's my purpose for writing that blog. If other people are sharing that when they're presenting to other teachers, that only helps my cause. So a lot of people find copyright too restrictive. Because if I put a copyright symbol on that, it means that nobody could use my material, reference, or talk about it unless it was in their classroom, but for their own learning and for conversation. And then it wouldn't be that my, what I say wouldn't be shared any further. So Creative Commons is a way for people to license their own work. And it can be any media, text, image, uh, video, audio. Um, and you can choose the restrictions you want. And we'll go through the different types of restrictions that you can choose. But let's watch a, let me just find my, close up some of my tabs here. Choose the right link. Here we go. This, this video is only three minutes long. And it is right there in the chat. Um, so let's watch that video. And then, thank you, Mally, I forgot you're on top of it. Um, let's watch that video for three minutes. I'll mute my mic for three minutes, and then we'll come back and, um, oh, maybe the web tour will work. Good, good idea. Let's take a look. Oh, there you go. So the video is either in front of you, or you can go follow the link. And we will watch the video and come back in three minutes. I'll mute my mic so that I'm not talking over top of your video. All right, let's watch that video.
If you give a green check mark when you finish the video, that would be great. Thank you. Awesome. I think most people have uh, have finished the video. Hopefully, I'm not talking over um, much too many people watching that video. Any thoughts or quick questions? Just kind of coming out of that um, after that video. Any initial thoughts? We're going to go look at some of those the licenses in a lot more detail um, and resources, but I'm interested in any kind of initial thoughts or questions or nice. That's, I love that, Francine. That's great. Yeah. No, and this is, the video even said, this is new. A, a couple of years ago, we didn't have people collaboratively creating songs from around the world or taking somebody's material and building upon it. Um, and it's, it, it's, yeah, it's, um, there's so much out there and there's so much benefit from people working together that I guess this came, you know, kind of grassroots. People didn't want the copyright, but they knew that most people couldn't go and afford lawyers to write their own licensing. Um, and so this is kind of Creative Commons, this organization has taken it to, to, to make it easy for anyone. So let's take a look at some of the details. So these are the four different restrictions that you can see on a um, Creative Commons license. And I think once we get to know what these symbols are, you're going to start to see them a lot more around the internet. Yes, I agree, Robin. It makes me um, feel better when I can say to a student, as, as a role model too, look at what I'm using, this is how I'm using it, and this is how they wanted to share it. That's a great point, Robin. Okay, these are the four kind of um, restrictions that can be done on a Creative Commons license. The first icon, the little person, is attribution. So if you see just that on a Creative Commons license, it means that you have to give them credit. And um, they may or may not tell you exactly how to give them credit. We'll practice it with some images uh, in a bit. But that's the um, little person means give the person credit. <laughs> um, the little loop, kind of like a redo symbol, is the share alike. And that means that, let's say Robin wrote a blog post and licensed it with Creative Commons. If I wanted to take, well, maybe I'll make it an image, an image would make this example easier. If I take Robin's image and I want to make something different using part of that image. So I take part of that image and I want to edit it and Robin has licensed their image with the, the share alike. It means that whatever final product I make using Robin's image, I have to share it. So if I create a handout that uses Robin's image, I have to share my handout with the same Creative Commons license as the material that I used. Does that make sense? Did I explain that kind of okay? <laughs> so if I've created something using somebody else's material, I have to share it in the same way that they did, if that makes sense. I'm just going to check and see if there's any kind of questions about that or, or thoughts about that share alike. Because that could be intimidating for some because we want to use the material but aren't always comfortable sharing everything we do. Um, that's a good question, Johanna. It really depends on how, um, on how it's done. So, yeah, essentially, if you've sourced them properly and then they go and they see that you've adapted their work, then you, that you would, in the credits at the end of your show, you would probably source and then, you know, source that, they would source you and then the, the original work. But ideally, really the idea of Creative Commons, what it does is it means that if I see that it was your image, I would go and look at your image online to look at the original and then I would see that you based it on somebody else. So you don't have to keep going like in depth, like 10 people if it's been worked on, if that makes sense. Um, the equal sign means no derivatives. So that means you can't change their work. So if I went and grabbed one of Mally's um, um, videos that she produced with her students and they licensed it with Creative Commons and I wanted to use it as part of a, um, maybe a presentation or something, I can use hers 
her video, I just can't change her video. So people add this to their license when they really are worried that the message might be misinterpreted or that something might, you know, change that would reflect badly on them if it was connected back to them. So they, um, they have, they explicitly say don't change it, you can use it as is. And then the last one is non-commercial. And I actually always license my work with this. I don't necessarily, if I'm creating material and works, I don't want people to go and make money off of it. I want people to go and use it to build on ideas and all sorts of great stuff, but I don't want them necessarily commercially going and making tons of money off of it without having to come back and talk to me first. So those are the four different components of the um, Creative Commons licenses, and I'm just going to show you. Here are some example licenses. Uh, yes, Johanna. Okay, so if I want to license something that I created, like a picture, um, and I don't want other people to make money off of it, but I might want to make money off of it on my own at some point, does that matter for... That's totally fine. Okay. That's totally fine. You can still put it out on the internet with, uh, like, on your website or say your, you know, your blog, your photo blog or something, okay. and you can just put non-commercial on it, but you can do whatever you want. Okay. Um, so these are some examples of the license. So that first one would be attribution only. Um, you can do whatever you want to it. You can use it commercially. You can edit it. You can um, do whatever you want with it, and then as long as you give the person credit. The next one um, on the middle one or the second one down on the first column is attribution and share alike. And then you've got an attribution and non-commercial. And then you get into the ones that have three or more over here. You have the attribution, non-commercial, and share alike. Or you have the attribution, don't change it, no derivatives. And then you have the attribution, non-commercial, non-derivatives. And you, yeah, and you have all of those. So that's what those little licenses look like. So on my blog, um, if you go to the creativecommons.org, it says get your, one of the links at the top of the page is get a license. You click on it, you answer three questions. Um, attribution is an automatic one. Do you want, can people make derivatives? Can they change it? Yes. Can they make money off of it or commercial? No. Um, What's the one I'm not talking about yet? What did I not say? Uh, do you want people to share their new works, like the, the way, same way that you shared yours? Yes. And then they would spit out a license for you, one of these pictures, with the text. And you can put that at the bottom of a handout. You can put that at the bottom of a blog, at the bottom of a, a bunch of photos, like a photo album online. And then you can just, then you've licensed your own work with that. So you go to that creativecommons.org to do that and across the top they have a make your own license. So that's pretty um, pretty good and knowing these pictures will help us when we're going to start looking at some photos in a second. So we've talked about why licensing your own work. Okay, I want to share this resource and maybe just take two seconds to take a look at it. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time um, looking at it. But basically, I'm going to suggest you kind of take a look at this one later. And if we have time at the very end, we'll come back and take a look at it. This is a, it's a PDF. It was created years ago. Um, I want to say like 2008 or 2009. Um, I'm sure it says it on the document. And it was created by a teacher who I think was a student success teacher at the time. Uh, outside of London, I believe. And then a teacher who had class of grade four at the time in Hamilton, and they worked together. And there was this resource for teachers in Sweden, I believe, about Creative Commons. And they um, created, they, there's this whole Swedish document about Creative Commons for teachers and helping teachers use it in in the classroom and all the neat things about it. And they really liked the document and wanted one for Canada, or at least in English. And so they took it and, and edited it and changed it. Of course, the people in Sweden licensed their work with Creative Commons so that they could do that. They could build on this Swedish document, change it, edit it. And this document is what they created together, 
and then shared out again with a Creative Commons license. And so it's a really neat document to help. Um, I would say that you know if you were working with other teachers trying to share some of these ideas, the PDF document that we looked at about copyright and this PDF document would be quite helpful um, to have um, to look at the difference between copyright and Creative Commons with other teachers. So take a look at that at some point in time. It's neat because it's actually created by kids in a class that they were working with at the time. But um, let's, I'm going to move on now, but keep that in mind to take a look at it. And again, this slide deck will come with these links in it. Okay. So here are two different ways to source an image. And the same can be true for most types of media, depending on how you're sharing them. You can put the username or a link right below the picture. So it really depends on what you're trying to do. Depending on if, if it's going to mess up your, art, like if I was doing a slide deck, and to have the image credit right below a picture was going to mess up my artistic flow, then I might choose to use the, the way on the right-hand side and have a, a slide at the end of my presentation that was picture credits as long as I made sure I left it up there long enough at the end. Maybe while we were just, you know, talking and leaving the room or something. Um, so you can do it either way. You can put your credit right b below the image or as a separate page. And if you're sharing your document on the web, so if it was a PowerPoint that I was sharing out to you, like digitally emailing to people or sharing with people, um, or if it was a document that I was sending out to people or a website, then I would try to hyperlink that source if I could. So I would highlight the person's name and make it link to the original place where I got the image. And that way, people who saw it could go and look at the original image um, if they wanted to. So that, those are two different ways to look at sourcing um, material, or images in particular. But you can do the same thing. So you could have a, you know, an audio credit right below a sound file or um, right below a video file, you can have a, a sources um, list of people's work that you've edited into your own. So I am going to wait for a couple seconds. Yes, I would include this in a bibliography. I'm just going to wait a couple seconds here while we have a couple of chat. Yes, it was very simple. And I'm going to show you, if I was web linking that, I'm going to show you that too. So what I'm going to do now is a demonstration using a Google slide deck and Google images. And I am going to go and search for some images, find who made them, and then source them in the Google slide deck. Here is hoping that the technology powers that be are working well. And I am going to share my computer screen. So when I go and do this, I don't see the chat anymore. So if I could, Mally, if you would grab the microphone if anybody asks the question that I need to answer while I'm in the demonstration, that would be great because I won't see the question uh, yeah, in there. Absolutely. So no gonna, thanks, Mally. So I'm going to do the demo, and then I'll come back to the room and we can have a discussion about it. Um, but if you have questions while I'm in the demo that you want me to show, throw it up in the chat. Mally will see, and um, and we'll just grab the mic and let me know. Or you can grab the mic and interrupt me at any time, because I'll just keep rambling on until I hear otherwise before I come back. OK, here we go. Let's hope that uh, I'm going to change, share Google Chrome. Um, no, I'm going to share my desktop. OK. OK. So I'm going to close this, close this. OK. So I'm going to use Google Images. Mally, actually, could you just let me know if you're seeing my computer screen OK? Yeah, it's good. Awesome. Yeah, just scroll slowly, because it was, yeah. yeah. OK, I will go slower now. Sorry. I just wanted to close a couple things out of the way. OK, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to show you. I'm gonna, there we go. This is a slide deck. I've used Google Slides, but it could be just PowerPoint. Like, it doesn't, the tool I'm using here is not important. Um, it's just like a PowerPoint presentation on the web. And I am going to go and find an image. And then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to source it. Here is one example. I found this beaker picture. <laughs> and I have a photo credit right on the same slide. And I did make this 
text link to the original place where I found it. On this slide, I have a really cool, actually, diagram of a neuron. And I didn't source it because this picture was actually in the public domain. There is no copyright license on this. There is no license at all. It is entirely open for use. You don't even have to source it at all. And we are going to create another slide right here. I am going to go and find an image. And then we'll come back and we'll um, practice finding, uh, sorry, bringing it, uh, sourcing it. Wow, there we go. OK. So I'm on Google. I'm going to type in um, flask, not flash, flask, and maybe image. OK. So I can either go to the images on Google Images, or I can click on images here. And that's going to take me to all of the images. So these are images that people have are copyrighted on some places or anywhere. And I could go to any of them. But I am going to do one more thing. And I am going to filter out the oops. Filter out the usage rights. So I'm actually going to take away um, labeled for reuse right here. There we go. So now I have filtered out all the ones that were not licensed for use. It's not a perfect filter. I mean, it's a computer doing the filtering. So I do make sure that I check the license on the sites anyways. But there are all sorts of interesting images here that I can use. And I can click on any of them. And, and I can see a little bit of where it came from. And I'm actually going to go right to the site where it came from. Um, otherwise, I could control copy, um, sorry, right click it on my Mac. It's a control click. Um, and I could save the image onto my computer from here. I'm going to go and take a look at where it came from before I do that. OK, so it's on the Wikimedia Commons. And I'm going to scroll down and start taking a look. OK. So here's a whole bunch of different file sizes and types. Here we go. I, the copyright holder of this work, released the work into the public domain. So I can use this however I want. I can now, I'm going to right click it. I can either copy the image or save the image. I'm just going to save it onto my desktop. And then I'm going to go into my slide deck. And I'm going to insert. I'm going to go find that image now. My desktop. Here we go. And I'm good. I'm just going to write on here so we know why it's not sourced. Um, and you wouldn't have to do this. I'm just doing this for educational reasons Oops. in the public domain. OK. So now let's go try and find one that's not in the public domain to look at how to source it. OK, Jack, Jack, I think there's um, yeah. not confusion, yeah. but they just want to know, people are asking questions. How can a teacher know if a picture used by a student is from a public domain or not? Is there an equivalent of the turn it in for plagiarism when correcting projects that's with images? That's a great images? question. Yeah. And how do you know a, an image is public domain? OK, that's a great question. No, there isn't a way to find out. Um, so I ask students to put in brackets in the public domain um, or in the, to give me like a photo credit at the end and then just to tell me so that I know that they've actually done the work to look f to find out who the user is. And you have to, so if, I'm just going to go back here to the Google Images again just to show how I went and found out if it was in the public domain or not. So let me try and find. Um, well, I'll go up from this one. So I'm in the Google Images. All of my images are here. I click on the one I want. It opens up the window. And I click on the title of the image. And it takes me to the original web page that that image is from. And everyone's going to look a little different. So I'm going to go and try and find one on a different site after. When it is Wikipedia or Wikimedia Commons, if I scroll down, right here is where, there we go. I just zoomed in a little bit. I'll give that a couple of seconds to kind of 
stop twitching around on your screen, sorry. Um, this right here is where I found out it was from the public domain. There was an actual statement on this page. So anyone can use it. So in this image, I'm going to unzoom now, sorry. In this image, that's how I knew. It just happened to be right below it. So let's go look at another image that's not in the public domain on somebody's website and take a look at that um, to show another example of how you might find out who the user is or what the, the, the licensing right is. And again, Mally, hop on in if I'm not answering the questions correctly. Or not, not correctly, but I'm not answering the questions. Um, I'm, as I hover over these images, just in case you can't see on my screen, it shows you the pixels, first of all. So this one says 1,000 times 1667. That's just the size of the image. And then it says, it starts to tell you the website. And almost all of these flask pictures happen to be coming from the wiki, the, the wiki, um, sorry, the commons, the public, that same website I was just on. So I'm going to try and look for, here's one right here that's on a different site. So I'm going to click on this one just so that we can see some different examples. Um, maybe my flask wasn't a very good example. Okay, so here's my flask. I'm going to click on this so that it takes me to the site that it came from. Pixabay. Oh my goodness, this one's in the public domain. So again, I could just copy this and use it. Um, let's try another one. I might have to find a picture of something different because apparently, what's this one? Flickr, there we go. Okay, I'm going to click on this image right here now. I'm going to click on the title of it. Okay, I'm on Flickr now. So Flickr is a photo sharing service. And right here below it, I can see the rights that are reserved. So this is the person right here. Jean-Etienne, it was cut off there. And this person has said, sure, use my photo. Just give me credit, attribute, and share alike. I am going to see if I can zoom in on that or not. I can. There we go. OK. Maybe that will make it easier for you to see. I'm just going to let it pause so that your screen stops kind of jumping all over the place. OK, so you can see the person for the attribution and the share alike. So that means that as long as my PowerPoint, even if I'm not putting it on the web, as long as I would license it that if anyone did get it, their hands on it, they could use it in the same way, then I'm good. Um, I can use this image. So. Here's how I would source this image. I would copy the link at the top. And I'm going to copy it. OK, so I've got that on my clipboard now. I am going to, is there a link to download it on Flickr down here? Nope. Where's my links to, oh, right there. I think that's my download. Yes, download this photo. And I can choose what size. I'm going to go with a small one just because I don't actually need it. OK, so I'm going to save that photo on my computer. OK, I'm going to go into my slide deck. I'm going to add the photo. There we go. And then one way for me to source it is to just type the link like that. Or the other way I could do it is I'm going to go back to that page. And I'm going to try and see if I can't copy this person's name. Unfortunately, their name, it's Corier, kind of cuts off there. I'm just going to click on that name to take me to their profile. Just so I can see that here we go. I want to copy their full name. There we go. I'm going to go back now. I'm sorry. I hope this isn't jumping around too much on your screen. OK. Now, back here, if I wanted to, what I could do, so I'm going to paste their name. Hmm, that doesn't look very pretty. I'll have to change that text to be black, maybe a little bit smaller. There we go. Well, maybe not that small. OK. I don't want to bold. And then 
I'm going to delete all those spaces that came. I'm going to copy this link and delete it because I don't need it to show up. And I'm going to copy their name. And I can do a couple things here to add a link to that text. I can right click it and add link. Or on Google um, Slides, there's a link button up here. But usually on most um, computer, most programs, control K lets you add a link to text. And if I paste that link in there and hit apply, it's now hyperlinked. So now it says photo credit, it says the person's name, and if anyone's digitally accessing this file, they can click on it and go back to that page. How are those questions coming along there, Matt? Yeah, there's just a new one that says, what if, a, a, what if a student takes a snip of an image on a web page or digital resource and places them in their PowerPoint, how would they source it? A snip of an image or the same way. So even if they are, sorry, I think if I think I understand what you're saying. Um, if they take a screenshot of it, basically, yeah, or like or on the Microsoft um, Windows, they take a snip tool. Yeah, okay. Um, same way. You still have to put the image below, um, photo credit below, or what you can do is hyperlink the actual image. So if I click on this image, I can click on that link and add the image, the link to the actual image. And so now if anyone clicks on that image, it'll take them to that link. But they have to do the same thing and go to the original site that that web, that, that credit, that photo came from and get the information from it. On the user's name if they have it. If there is no username, then just put the URL, like the web link that it came from. Because there's not, it, Flickr is nice that it has a username there, but not all sites do. It takes some practice. And I'm going to show you a tool to make this a whole heck of a lot easier, too. Can I come back out of the demo now, or are there more questions that I should go and show more examples in the demo? Maybe the give page. a green check mark if, you're, if you understand and are OK to go back out of the demo. Oh, and Nikat wants one more example. OK, I can do one more example, no problem. OK, let's see. I need to find another fun soft picture. Let's see. Oh, I want that to disappear again. Here we go. That's another Flickr one. I don't want to use Flickr because that website, we've seen what that looks like. Oh, what's this one? Well, I'm scared of this one. Geograph, I, I, you can't see it, but probably because it's too small. But I can see this, the, the website that this picture comes from looks like it's geograph.org.uk. I'm not really sure how this went under my search for a flask, but, oh, it's the area, a flask walk. Okay, here we go. I'm afraid because I've never heard of the site before, so I've never grabbed images from this one. Let's take a look. I'm going to click on it. Okay, here we are. Here is copyright and licensed for reuse under the Creative Commons license. Okay. And I'm going to click on the link because the Creative Commons license is hyperlinked here. I'm going to click on it to find out what kind of license it says. Okay, so it's taking me. So they've licensed theirs with attribution. I have to give them credit. And look, they've even given me the link to attribute the work. So I'm going to copy that and to share a link. I'm going to go back. Okay, so they've given me the link to share them. Let's see, though, what happens. It doesn't look like a very nice link, but I'm going to go back and into my Google. Oh, I need to save the image. Save the image on my desktop. Okay, it starts with 2.9. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go to a new slide. Okay, photo. Oops. Credit. Let's see what that. Whoa, that is quite the code. 
So the code that they gave me on there was an embed code to put on a website. So I'm not going to use that because I don't think they would want me to use that as their credit on just a slide deck. So I'm going to go back to their site. And I am going to go up to the top. So I don't see a username here anywhere. Like I don't see like, I think it's like an organization here. So I don't see like a person I can give that credit to. So I'm going to use the link that they've done. Go back to my science images. Photo credit is there. There's the link. And I'm going to add the image now. There we go. There we go. I've got to make that a little prettier. Oh, I'm cutting off my photo credit. So I might do a couple different things. I might change to put it over top of it or to maybe move this or make it smaller, whatever I needed to do. And so that one, I didn't, ha I couldn't find a username, but they did license it for attribution credit, so I've given them credit. If I had been making a website, which is a little bit beyond um, what we're normally doing, then I could have just taken that whole embed code and embedded it in the code of my website, and that would have used, it would have given an automatic credit to the image, um, but that's coding for a website, so it's not important um, for making a slide deck. So I've, now I've met the, rec the requirements here. I've given credit to the person, somebody who basically I ask my students to ask themselves two questions. One, is it clear that I didn't take that photo? So it, um, I want my students, if they're doing any sort of presentation, any sort of document creation, if they're using other people's images, is it absolutely clear that that image wasn't taken by them? Are they claiming that basically does it look like um, they're, they've done things that they haven't? The second question is, as a user or as somebody looking at your material, can I go back and find the original source, the original image, so that I could use it if I wanted to? I ask them those two things. And then if they can answer those two questions, then they've kind of met the requirements. So the two questions, again, can I tell that the material isn't, wasn't created by you, that you used somebody else's material? And can I go back and find the original material? If they're good, then I'm good. That's my general questions. Okay. Yeah, there's a couple of questions, I, Jack. Um, so we have, um, okay. I'll go in order. Should I tell students that they can't find the source, they can't use it? I'm thinking about times when an image leads to a page without the image on the site. Yeah, I would. That would become my general policy in a class. I know it's frustrating. Um, hopefully the, the, t the, the little tool I'm about to show you after will help a little bit for as you're making the transition into students really understanding this because it takes a lot of time. But that would be my okay, general Okay, and if we are... Are we able to share a copyrighted image? Yep, we are because it's fair dealing for education. So even if this wasn't shared by that person and it was copyrighted, I could use it for education. Okay. And can you clarify share alike? Does this require that you post it for sharing? It requires that if someone got their hands on my slide deck, they could use it in the same way that that person shared their material. So credit. So yes, so it doesn't mean I have to actively go out and share it. It just means that I've li I license that work, even if you're not really actually sharing it out to license it, but that you would share your work and that someone else that they asked could have this slide deck and could use it as long as they credited me. Right, and the last question is, is basically reiterating. So students can use any image because it's for education. Yes, and so I have my students search though with that search feature that it, the, the images were labeled for reuse. But if there's a reason to use something copyrighted, I let them, as long as they understand. And I work with older students, too, um, in high school. So I want them to leave me, my, the comfort of our four educational walls, to know what it's like in the real world. So I spend a lot of time focusing on that component of it. But at the end of the day, fair dealing is that we can use it as copyright, even if it's copyrighted and not shared um, for reuse because 
we are educators, and as long as we're using it in the student work or for education, then we're okay. And that's those are the questions. Okay, I'm going to come back. Oh, no. Um, you know what? Because I'm here and because you've managed to do that, I'm going to just jump in and show you another little tool. Um, and then I'll come back to you and share you the link to the tool. So here is a tool that I will send you a link. It works on iPads, iPhones, computers, everything. Some guy, I'm assuming his name is John Johnson, because his um, site is johnjohnson.info, has created this search tool. It searches Flickr for images that are licensed with Creative Commons, and then it will source them for you. So I'm going to search for, I don't know, a ball. I want a picture of a ball for my slide deck. It'll come up with pictures from Flickr that have been licensed for reuse that have something to do with the ball. I'm kind of liking the, the pool one here. So let's say I'm doing a slideshow on gambling. No, that's probably not a good one, but whatever. I'm doing a slide deck on something. Here is my image. I decide, yes, I want this image. I can choose the size of the image right here. I'm going to stick with this one. If I'm making a website, I can get the code. But chances are what I want is a stamp, which means I want it sourced. So I'm going to click on this. And what it does is it gets me the, the image to download. I'm going to download it. It's on my desktop. I'm going to go back into my slide deck. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go find that image now. And you can see, try to make this as big as I can, it automatically sourced for me right along the bottom. So it is taking the source from Flickr and stamping that image. So the downfalls are not every image in the world is available on Flickr. It's only searching Flickr. The pros, as an introduction to sourcing images, it's a great way to get it done on any device quickly and easily and to have it right within the, um, right within the image. Any questions about that tool? I'm going to give you the link to that tool. I we put the link in the chat, so, um, yep. Nope, we're good, um, Jack. So just maybe keep in mind there's only six minutes left. Yep, I am. That's why I'm going to come back now. And we are pretty close to, okay, so I'm going to come back to this room. I am going to stop sharing. Phew, okay, I'm back. So now I'm pretty sure... Yes, that tool is fantastic. Let me just come through here. Okay, so there we go. There is that tool, a link right there. So thoughts, questions? We were going to practice. Everyone go out and find an image and practice and put it back into that slide deck, but um, meh, we, don't, we didn't quite make time for that. Sorry. Um, I'm just going to read Robin's thing here, comment here. You can. That is a great point, Robin. Someone showed me that a few weeks ago, and I forgot. I don't suppose you happen to have a mic, do you, Robin, to explain that? Or are you, are you just chat? No, okay, sorry. Thanks. <laughs> okay, I'll try and explain it, and then you let me know if I've made a mistake. So if you copy an image. So if a student's handed me in a document or a slide deck and there's images in it, I can right click copy that image and I can paste it into Google Images and it will search the web for images with the same bitmap, like the same, um, like the little code that's behind images. Does that sound awfully untechnical for your ComTech ears there, Robin? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and then it will find those um, images for you. So if a kid has an image that they forgot to source, this is very helpful, because they can go and look for that original site and then source it. But Robin's made a great point that it's great to catch plagiarism as well. Thank you so much, Robin, for bringing that up. I totally, that slipped my mind. I can't believe that that feature slipped my mind. Yeah, it is. So it's a little bit awkward because you're copying an image and pasting it back up into a text box, but it works. And it goes and searches the, um, the web for it. 
just going to let things catch up here a little bit. Oh, that's a great point. Sometimes you can just drag the image up into the search box. Brilliant. Brilliant. Any other thoughts or neat tricks um, that folks have or questions or this is a, a content heavy, like, processing time required after this kind of in my mind. It's a lot to take and sort and it's a process with students. I find that it takes me a lot of um, practice activities with students that I would never assess them on doing this properly because it's changing a culture for a lot of, especially secondary students, um, that and, I, and I, it's not a culture I quote unquote blame them for. Many teachers aren't sourcing images that they use. So this takes practice. It takes a lot of work. It's a lot of language. It's a, it's a skill. Um, and so I do a lot of work with students slowly embedding it into different activities so that I'm not drilling it into them like an hour and a half like, I, like we have, <laughs> um, but adding it in bits and pieces over some time and slowly work on their skills throughout a semester. Mally, do you want to add anything from the elementary perspective here about the sourcing images or training, like the actual practical side of working with some of the younger kids? Because I know you did this a lot in your classroom. Yeah, and I just, I just sort of to reiterate what Jacqueline says, it takes a lot of modeling and um, starting early and having those discussions about music and images and videos and how you um, and how you share and um, and use them in, in work because because like like Jacqueline says it's a culture of change and we need to just change the the way that the kids think about what is out there and and basically start them early and start those habits early so when they do get to uh, to secondary it becomes part of their their wheelhouse they already know how to do this. But it does take practice, cool. and, and I think all of you guys have made a great start by um, by participating in, in the webinar tonight and learning from Jacqueline, because she really does have a lot of practice. But yeah, my um, advice for elementary is start them early and and, uh, and and with modeling. When you're doing your presentations and, and your PowerPoints for your students, talk about that image and, and show them that it came from somewhere else, that they didn't they didn't take it, that you didn't take that picture. And also if you are, you know, your kids are taking photographs, how they can be sharing. For example, my students had a Flickr account, or their, the class had a Flickr account, and, uh, and we shared that way. So bottom line, start cool. early. And please share this with any teacher you can get your hand, that you can force to listen to you. Because I, like, so tonight we have, we have a great group in here, but this is probably the lowest attended webinar that I've run through OTF Connect. And it's because I don't know if the topic, either a lot of teachers think, oh, they know everything about it, or they think, meh, it's not very, it's not a sexy, <laughs> attractive topic. So, but I do have a strong, I don't know, I'm very passionate about the fact that we need to practice this with teachers and we need to spread the message and to share so that we're all modeling the idea and our students are um, are learning from the best because we, we're a big influence on our students whether we know and it or the, not. Yeah, and the, exactly, and the, and the other thing to think about is um, you don't want to make yourself that test case. Um, I, my brother is a professional photographer and there's a huge movement in photography right now to look for bloggers who are using images that have been uploaded and are not properly credited. So um, when you have a, you know, a group of professional photographers looking at blogs, you, uh, you need to kind of think twice about how you're going to be introducing this to students. Cool. And tonight's session was recorded. And all of this slide deck is available, and I've, um, I'm going to make sure that Mally has the link. And there's my contact. And, oh, Mally, you're awesome. Um, my contact information is right there. So it's Jay Calder at Simcoe County or SCDSB. Um, and at Twitter, I'm actually J-A-C-C-A-L-D-E-R. Um, and then there's a website uh, with some resources on it as well. But you'll get an email from OTF Connects with this information. Please send folks to the recording. By all means, this recording doesn't go anywhere. It's archived on the OTF site. So it can be used, like if a PLC or a, like a, a group of teachers was starting to do some media work in their class and they wanted to spend an hour and go through this, they can. Um, and by all means, give me a shout if you have any questions and I will find out the answers. My communication department at my board is um, 
knows me by name and hides under the desk now when I come in the room because I'm always going in and asking questions about, because we have a student internet radio and Natalie and I are talking about film festivals on our board um, later on this week and different stuff like that. So they um, we're always asking for clarification and questions from our communication department on our board and they'd love to be a part of it. So thank you. Yeah, thanks Jacqueline for really great and, and I think very important information and as Jacqueline said, share it with your staff um, at a PLC would be a great um, at a great time, even sharing some of those other videos and links would be an awesome opportunity for for um, teachers and kids to learn more about um, something that's evolving. It's an ever-changing um, topic and, and absolutely really important. So just before we finish off, there's um, I'm just going to stop the recording.